Recently, I've been trying to 100% complete the Jedi Survivor game. And I thought today to celebrate almost completing 100%. More on that later, I would build five creatures from the game. And to start off, I think I have to introduce the most annoying of these creatures. Technically a droid, and it's this scavenger droid, which does steal a few of the collectibles in the game. And I've noticed so many of these pop up as I've been running through it and only just realized if you're actually meant to kill these droids. I'll put up an image so you have a side-by-side -side comparison of what these droids are meant to look like, but you're actually meant to kill them so they drop the collectible and it is a bit morbid, but they are so very annoying. I really like how this scavenger droid turned out. It's a bit bigger than minifigure scout. I do have cow Kestas here and I think they're meant to be about half the size of cow, not cow, be half the size of them. And it's an old custom minifigure of cow I've made. There is a short about if you want to know what pieces I have used. If you don't want to pick up the new Star Destroyer, it's a much, much cheaper option. And the next one is the one from Jedi Fallen Order. It's one of the little boglins, I think they're called. And it's these fluffy creatures that I'll put on screen so you can get a comparison of what they are meant to look like. I have used an orange beard to represent the bushy tail of this creature and tried to build it as accurate to size as I can. That goes for all of these. They're not perfectly minifigure scale, but if you do have a display, I think they're close enough to pass off as pretty close to scale. You've got the roller skates for the eye, similar to the recent Garandon chess piece that I made for my Star Wars chessboard. You've got the two little ears represented by a clip and you've actually got two of these mechanical hand, these clips with the bars to represent the two little gray feet at the bottom of the boglin. It's so small that my camera won't even focus on it. And the next one is actually based off an existing Lego set, this Tauntaun. And if you've played the game, you know exactly what animal this is going to be. There's only one animal that's like the Tauntaun and that is the Neko, I believe it's pronounced again. I am terrible with pronunciations on this channel, so I don't really know how it's said, but you can definitely see where the inspiration from the Tauntaun has been taken. I've recolored some of the pieces to get the black ears, the black mouth, the black hands, and also the black feet. In fact, that slope should be tan, so I'm just gonna flip the Tauntaun and you can pretend you never even saw it. And you might have noticed on the back of this Neko, I have also carried across one of the jumper studs. I've tried to tile it off so it looks like feathers on the back and it's got a much shorter tail to the Tauntaun. I have switched up a few things from the back. You might not have been able to see from the front. So whereas the Tauntaun's tail is four studs, the Neko's only two. It doesn't have the backpack or the saddle because it is still a wild creature. Even when we kind of tame it to ride it. It's still a wild creature. We're not saddling it up or adding any of that in the game. But there is a stud so we can get our custom cow Kestas here, which is unchanged from the last video. It is Jedi Survivor, so you can really have any hair and head. And I really like, someone commented saying you could use the Thor headpiece. And that does work really well for the beard. I think he has by default for the game, but this is meant to be from Fallen Order. And I have found myself going back to the scrapyard clothes, even in Jedi Survivor for Cal, making it look like how we started off in Fallen Order. So perhaps it's time to have a little playthrough of that. Let me know if you'd like to see some games on the channel, but I think I'll probably stick to making Lego of them. And as you can see, Cal fits on, even with BD on his back. We don't have to remove BD, you can if you want, and include a bracket on the back here. In fact, let's try and fit the bracket we've got BD on just behind Cal and see if BD can ride separately to Cal. There you go, it is possible. And that actually looks pretty cool. If you wanted this on display, you could definitely twist Cal's head and have them looking out perhaps over the horizon on the back of the Neku. I haven't quite explored 100% of all of the world, specifically Kobo, because there are a few different bugs. Now, I've only got two bugs that I've run into. The rest has allowed me to fully explore, but I haven't collected all the collectibles yet. When I was on Jeddah, I did unlock something that shows where all the collectibles are, which is gonna make it much, much easier. So in a few weeks time, when I collect all the collectibles, perhaps there'll be a another one of these videos. It does mean I haven't technically completed the game or at least fully explored everywhere because I think one of the little sections on Kobo is 92.5% or something like that. 
even though technically I have explored everything, it's just not coming up on the map. So it sucks that a game that's been out for two years has still got these bugs, but I didn't realize until one of you's commented actually today. Originally, it wasn't even out on the PS4, so it's not really a surprise that EA, Epic, whoever had the exclusive Star Wars license has now lost it to people like Ubisoft coming out with Outlaws. And if you do enjoy this one, don't forget to check out the video where I built Outlaws in Lego. And like I said at the start of the video, I am trying to keep these accurate to minifigure scale. This is the creature that you use to fly around and get around the map, especially on Kobo. And there's actually a few missions where you need to use these, but you can see right now, it's in a sitting resting position. The towel isn't receiving any of the pressure because it's standing on its back legs and on its wings, just like you see in the game. But you might have noticed the hinges on the side of the wings, because if we were to fold these hinges out, you can see there is handles at the bottom for Cal to grab onto. And I think the best way to grab onto them is to remove BD and just clip the hand. And now Cal is ready to soar over the skies of Kobo. And I think this feature is one of my favorite from the video, because the rest of them have just been pretty regular animals. You can sit cow on the back of the Neko and even the next one you can sit cow on the back but besides that there's not been many different play features whereas this you can have standing you could probably have a few of them cow flying with one over a mock. If I ever build a large scale mock from Jedi Survivor or to be fair I'd even sneak it in a Jedi Fallen Order build. I'll definitely have this flying over the top and the fact that the wings it might not be as realistic with the wings folding up, but that wingspan is also pretty cool. You've got the little hands on the wings as well, and just a range of different slope techniques that have not only made the wings somewhat come to life, but also made it functional and still look somewhat sloped off. The head's a little creepy, but I really like the piercing yellow eyes. I'm not sure if this last creature will actually fit on the camera right now because it is the tallest of the bunch, and of course, I'm talking about the Spammel. It's easy to remember the name of this one because it sounds like camel. And to be fair, the creature definitely looks like a Star Wars fired camel. Now, these aren't technically from Jedi Survivor. They're in Jedi Survivor, but they actually appeared first in Rogue One, a Star Wars story in the background on Jedi. And then they did appear in, I think it was the Mandalorian they appeared in. We have seen them somewhere else in Star Wars. I remember seeing an image of it when I was researching for this model and I think I've created a pretty good model. Obviously in universe is it going to be about three times the height of cow? I think we're looking more towards five, six, even ten times the height of cow with how they're portrayed. They're meant to be the same size as the ATSTs, which I think is absolutely crazy for a creature. I mean this could probably even trample an ATST if the Imperials aren't careful but like I said you can fit cow on top and I purposely sunk the legs because cow and Merrin's legs do end up going over the side of the camel let me just raise the camera so you can see cow and BD there but with Lego minifigures you're unable to spread the legs over the side so this is the best we can do for the spammel nice long legs with five brick tall lower bits then we've got some plate work and fancy tiling to smooth off the muscles on the high bit. And there is a gap for a Merin minifigure. I've seen one or two expensive Merin customs, but I'd really like to see if someone could do a cheaper custom. And I don't mean rip off these companies. I mean a custom minifigure that has a unique design that doesn't use official Lego parts because it tends to be that's what's driving up the price. So I'd love to get my hands on a Merrin and a few other minifigures. In fact, I'm definitely planning on doing a hallway diorama for Cal from the Jedi Survivor game. But let's get all of the other creatures out before we wrap up the video. Anyway, that is all for today's video. I'd love to hear your favorite down in the comments. I hope you enjoyed and as always, may the bricks be with you.